Okay, so this is your annotation guide for I Am Malala. So firstly, I like to break annotation guides down into themes. Firstly, I always choose four, just so we can be consistent with four colors. And the four themes are, according to me, gender roles, corruption, love and support, and activism. Uh, so this is my current version of an insert that I would put in the front cover of my novel, which I have in fact put in the front of my novel, as you can see from the quote there. Uh, and this is how I set out my book, and this is something I refer back to frequently so I can annotate for the themes, the symbols, and the motifs. So our first theme is corruption. And so if we look down the right hand side, we're talking about the corruption of Islam and the teachings within the Quran, uh, which is something that she believes is occurring constantly, and she makes many references to this. Uh, there's also the corruption of truth through rumor, conspiracy, and hearsay. So she sees this as running counter to her belief in truth, education, and self-betterment through knowledge. And so corruption in this sense is when people, you know, accuse the Americans of doing corrupt things and sort of conspiracy theories that they believe might be taking place. Also the corruption of the military, of the government, and this is more of a subtle one, but also of Malala through her fame. So if you take a different perspective on the text from a Pakistani point of view, they're viewing Malala as sort of being corrupted, being turned into less of a Pakistani citizen through her engagement with fame and the West. Uh, and a quote you need to get you started is on page 238. My mother, for example, would say they can't be Muslims. Some people call themselves Muslims, but their actions are not Islamic. So that's your first quote to get you started. Go find that one, decide what color corruption is and highlight that. This is a really obvious one, but gender roles is a key theme. Uh, so we're talking about, of course, about Malala's father, Ziyadun Yusuf, Yusuf Zai and her mother, whose name is Tor Pakai, though it's not necessarily referenced within the text, but that's her name. She's just mum and dad. Uh, dad gets a lot, obviously a lot more of an expansive description in the book, and you could comment on why that is the case. Uh, so we're talking about the role of women and girls in society and their development, especially in a country like Pakistan. Uh, appropriate dress, appropriate behavior, and the views of society based on gender roles. So when I was born, people in our village commiserated with my mother and nobody congratulated my father. I was a girl in a land where rifles are fired in celebration of a son, while daughters are hidden away behind a curtain, their role in life simply to prepare food and give birth to children. So that's on page nine, so that's your first to get you started. Okay, so love and support. So obviously Malala is putting herself out there a fair bit. She's putting herself under great threat and risk. And so she comments regularly about her love, love and support. So we're talking about, of course, from mother and father, from teachers, from political figures, and also to a lesser extent from the West. So that is elicited through the BBC and other organizations like that. Um, such as when she's recovering in hospital, she talks about the support of the letters and the you know, famous people who've messaged her and sent letters to her and kind of buoyed her confidence and faith in what she's doing. So our first page is peace in every home, every street, every village, every country. This is my dream. This is my dream education for every boy and girl in the world to sit down on a chair and read my books with all my friends at school is my right to see each and every human being with a smile with a smile of happiness is my wish i'm malala my world has changed but i have not so this is kind of her being her sense of being supported by the world and her place within it and the final theme is activism so this takes many forms so malala's activism for the world for women's rights for education for giving a voice to Pakistan, activism by her teachers, and more everyday and simple acts of activism, such as her parents defending her, her wearing of uh, no scarf to school at certain days. These sort of things are small acts of activism. And as an example on page 261, we've got, I don't want to be thought of as the girl who was shot by the Taliban, but the girl who fought for education. This is the cause to which I devote my life. The motifs run throughout the book, uh, and they're consistent. So the burqa is a motif for, she sees it as oppression at certain points, um, but also represents a lot of different other things to different people. So we'll be exploring how that motif is positioned within the story by her, and also by the culture in which she is a part. The Swat Valley represents a whole bunch of things to her, safety, danger, coming home, returning, uh, nature's beauty, they're all sort of linked into her views of the Swat Valley. Her school books, of course, are quite symbolic and important to her. She pines for them when she doesn't have them. Uh, Western versus Eastern culture is something to really keep in mind as you're going through, because you're thinking of this as a contested text, so it's sort of the West 
versus the East or Pakistani culture in particular, and you're trying to consider her ways of depicting these in different ways, which she favours and which she denigrates at different points. Of course, Islam, peace, clothing, competition, language, so especially in the chapter about her father, the hawk, the, or something similar, um, she's talking about the language he uses, she talks about famous poets a great deal. She also talks about fear and Pashtun culture, which is something she puts almost above everything else. So, if you look at the motifs here, you're thinking about which one she values the most, which one she values the least, and how she positions herself in relationship to them. So, symbols, mostly these, most of these you can find yourself, but they're just things that represent more than what they are. I haven't listed too many here because it's basically a series of memoirs, diaries, anecdotes. So, she hasn't really purposely constructed too many symbols into that, but the motifs are things that run throughout the story. So, I've just got almonds, diner or the school bus, courage, Buddhas, and the colour pink. Um, pink and Buddhas could even become motifs depending on how you feel about those two. Um, but symbols are just things that represent more than what they are. Okay, so literary devices, there aren't a heap because again, it's a diary style text. Um, one phrase you might want to use is epistolary style, which basically means a series of vignettes or a series of diary entries or a series of accounts or reports, which is something that this roughly fits the format of. You could talk about it being ghost written or co-written. So uh, consider Christina Lamb, I believe, is the person who assisted her in writing it. So you're deciding who was most involved when her voice is dominant and when Malala's voice is dominant. You want to talk about the non-linear narrative and the way that we jump forward and jump back. Obviously she foreshadows the fact that she's going to be shot quite early in the piece and sets that out of the way. Um, but also consider other ways that she sequenced events, sequenced events and also how she talks about historical elements that have not yet occurred or that she might not have been aware of at the actual time of her writing. Then we have juxtaposition, which is this uh, complicated and fancy word for comparison. It means basically to put two things that are dissimilar alongside one another for comparison. So for this, she's mostly talking about, you know, true Islam, uh, true religion, you know, right, correct dealings and true thoughts. So she's comparing different things side by side. Uh, she does foreshadowing, as I said previously, with her being shot and her, you know, being whisked away. She uses irony at times to juxtapose the different things she's trying to set up. Very few similes and metaphors, but when they do occur, you'll be wanting to underline them and really draw out what she's trying to say. And there you might consider the ghost written aspect of the text. Are they her metaphors or are they added by her co-writer? Then you're thinking imagery as well. Uh, she uses a whole range of different imagery which relates to the motifs and the symbols, so I'll let you draw those out. Uh, she uses a great deal of quotations, so not from herself but from other people, famous people, Abraham Lincoln, those sort of key big figures, um, Martin Luther King I think she quotes at one point. She uses allusions to text, so an allusion is just when you refer to a part of a text without actually naming it in your own text. Intertextual references are when you specifically give the title of a text, and she does this a lot because obviously as a big reader, it's something she believes in. Maxims are kind of like sayings rather than quotations, but they're also key in this story. Characterization, so how she describes specifically her father and her mother and her teachers, and also the uh, generals that she meets, just the way that she sets up their characters strongly, especially the kind of dictators that come in later. She talks, really sets up a really clear picture of who they are and in a lot of ways what's wrong with them. And then there's just internal monologues, so you're looking for italics for this uh, and when she kind of is running through thoughts in her head rather than actually presenting the narrative of the story. Okay, so these are different readings of the text. So this is where you bring in literary elements and literature ways of thinking, different lenses of looking at the text. So there's your colonial and post-colonial. So Pakistan was ruled by a colonial power, an outside power, uh, and so you're considering the ways that, that Pakistan has been helped and hindered by that. Uh, you think about the political aspects, so the tensions between traditional Pashtun culture, justice, democracy, freedom of speech, Taliban and religious law is something that is inherently political, so a great deal of what she says is uh, really quite political statements and also acts of activism. So you might want to be considering the political ramifications of things she's saying, especially about the leaders as they roll into Pakistan. Then obviously there's the feminist reading, so pretty much every element of the text contains feminist undertones. She's trying to say that, you know, women deserve to be treated equal, which in Pakistan, according to her description at least, is something that is very much not the case. 
You've got the sort of Bildungsroman, which is a German origin word, which is in the English language meaning coming of age. So there's also the way that she's growing up from a young girl into a woman, into a confident, outspoken participant in the world rather than just a student. And that's something you could comment on, the progression within the story to help you keep on task and understand kind of what you're trying to drive towards. Then there is the religious aspect of the text and obviously she's making quite outrageous and daring comments really on uh, the role of Islam and what true Islam is and she's making very clear religious opinions clear to us and saying which she believes are most valuable and which are quite dangerous at times. Then there's just the ethical dimension so she's basically telling you the correct way to live your life based on an ethical approach so you see something wrong and you act. Okay, so I hope this has given you a bit of an insight into the way, different ways that you can approach and think about the text before you even read it, uh, or to make a rereading and start to annotate for key quotes and start to plan sort of down the road for the exam and uh, your sort of coursework as well. I've made a number of videos using this annotation guide, so you can click through those and get a bit, get a little bit established on how you would use this annotation guide to find quotes and sort of to guide your reading rather than just reading without a purpose. Good luck.